Hey guys! Welcome! You ready for, to do some drawing today? Um, so, I'm Shono. This is me drawing some stuff. Today, uh, we're going to be drawing some commissions. I have a lot of commissions to do. I've got about a dozen to get through. Um, obviously, I'm not going to get through all of them uh, today. Uh, but, uh, that's what we're going to be working on today. Um, so if you like what you see, make sure you follow me. Um, I'm about halfway to becoming an affiliate. I've only been streaming for a couple weeks now, so that's um, I'm actually really impressed. So thank you guys who have followed me. And um, yeah, let's do some drawing. Uh, so, uh, <clears throat> so these are commissions I'm working on. Uh, these aren't my characters. These aren't my designs. Uh, it's just uh, what I was hired to draw so uh, that's what we're working on today uh, so the first uh, character here actually I have to pull this up this is, I forgot off the top of my head because whenever I'm streaming my mind goes to mush so uh, okay so this character I'm first drawing here uh, her name is Allison and it was created by I hope I say this right uh, Argonis uh, so it's Argonus's character, and um, uh, we're going to work on it. As you can see, I've already have it all drawn up. Uh, what, what I like to do when I do commissions is I, I do the pencils first. I send it to uh, the client, um, get them to approve it, make sure I didn't make any mistakes, like if I do the hair wrong or you know, really did anything wrong that's out of the character. Um, and if they approve it, then I move on from there uh, and I start doing the, the final inks and color or whatever they commission me to draw. So, so as you can see, I've already gotten the, the sketch done. I got the permission that, uh, that this character, it looks good and it's ready for finish. Now this piece is uh, just going to be black and white piece, which means at the very least just a really nice ink uh, lines. Our digital ink lines. Um, we'll see how it goes from there. I might add some tones, but we'll see. So, let's just get drawing then. Oops. I should start on the right layer. So, uh, as usual, when I'm uh, working here, doing commissions, doing any kind of drawing, if you guys have any questions, um, about what I'm doing, how I'm doing it, um, you know, feel free to ask. Since I am uh, doing commissions, I do need to focus a little bit. I might not be doing as much talking as normal. Uh, so feel free again to i'm going to try to keep an eye on the chat a bit uh, so feel free to um to ask so but if i'm if i don't chat a lot it's because i'm focusing and trying to figure out the best way to approach Now you might see if I zoom in here how these ink the, the lines are kind of um, not perfectly clean whenever I I ink I really I like to use this digital brush that um, kind of mimics uh, my real life brush a little bit I um, my brush you uh, real life uh, kind of follows the the grit or the grain of the paper and so it never has a perfectly smooth line. And I don't know, I like that roughness. That the aesthetic you get from not a perfectly clean line, it makes it feel a little more organic.
And actually, I need to put on some music for myself. You guys should be hearing some great Final Fantasy music right now. But I can't hear that. So I'm going to put on some music for myself. This is looking so far. <laughs> All right. Let's add some texture here to the horns. I always love uh, inking hair because it can be just so loose with it. I don't have to have a perfect, clean, sharp line because our hair just moves in all sorts of directions. Good. Make sure we save.
<laughs> Always make sure that you have uh, followed adjacent pixels uh, checked, or else you're going to accidentally paint bucket the entire uh, page. <laughs> Pretty good so far. Often I don't really like, really, um, unless I'm going for a very flat graphic look, I don't like very flat blacks. I usually like to go back in, uh, even if I paint bucket in some blacks, I usually like to go back in and kind of pull away some of it. it a little more depth because it's very rare in real life if you look at real life and you see um, uh, a shadow it's super rare that it's just so pitch black that you don't see anything in it usually there's a little glim of light or some kind of gradient in there so by kind of going back in with the hatchings Especially when you're just working with a black and white piece and you don't have color to help you out. It will help you with um, getting that kind of gradient of shadow. It's a little too scratchy. We might go back in and fix that up a little bit, but let's move on for now. Get these big eyes drawn up. I have a dilemma. Do I want to? It's actually looking good. Um, so do I want to draw the hair being semi-transparent and seeing a little bit of the eyelashes here? Or do I want to make them completely opaque? Hmm. I think... I think what I want to do is make them a little opaque because I really like these eyelashes and so frankly I just want to draw them
and I'll kind of go back in, kind of like what I did with the neck, and kind of make the eyelashes look a little more, or the hair look a little more transparent. bad. Alright, so let's not cheap, but let's let's make this next part easy on me. Switch over to my circle tool. I'm just gonna draw. Oops. Ah. <laughs> We're just gonna draw on the lips here. advantages to working digitally. to make it easy on me. I'm just going to copy that. I'm just going to move that right over to here. Then we're going to merge these two, all the light art layers, because I don't want to get confused here. There we go. Let's see how that's looking. I think that looks pretty good. All right, well, let's keep this train going. Uh, uh, ideally, if we can, I would love during this stream to finish two commissions. So this one's just gonna be black and white. So I think I'd be able to get that one done in the next maybe half hour, I hope, uh, maybe. 45 minutes, we'll see. And then I'd like to then move on to this one here. This one's gonna be a full color piece. Uh, so th this would be a little more involved, but since it's just 
um, a bust, it shouldn't take as long. But first things first, we gotta finish this one here. So how's everyone doing today? I know I'm not chatting a lot. You guys, is Saturday's doing all right? Did you guys get to sleep in? Did you guys have to work? I guess technically I have to work. I'm working right now. I gotta get these commissions done. Good. Hey, Doug's joined us. Hey, Doug. to save. Oh, you don't have to work, Seth. That's good. All right. Back to it. So for the, those of you guys who are uh, just joining us, I'm working on commissions right now. This is a character by the name of Allison. It's an original character of the, the uh, person who commissioned it. It's their own original character. And uh, it, it's just gonna be a black and white commission. Uh, no color on this one. But I still might add some tones. I'm not 100% sure exactly how, how I'm going to finish this off. Uh, if I really like it in just the line art form, I might just leave it that way. If I might, if I feel like it might need some textures or, uh, or some values, I'll throw in some, some screen tones.
Nope, uh, it's not D&D related. Although, she does look like a fantasy character, doesn't she? Uh, actually, you know, now that I said that, I could be completely wrong. Maybe this is a D&D character. I didn't get the full um, uh, bio of the character. Uh, all I got was uh, her name and uh, reference photos, or photos, some reference drawings. Um, so maybe they are D&D related, I'm not 100% sure. I didn't think to ask. Pretty good. How's everything sounding on your guys' end? Is the music uh, okay? Is it. I hope it's not too loud. I do test uh, recordings to see if everything sounds okay, but just because it sounded alright on my end doesn't mean it sounded good. On, it's sounding good on your side. So. Let me know if anything's too loud or too quiet or just annoying. I'm still learning how to do this stuff, so. It's fine. Good. It's a, a remix of Final Fantasy VII music. Because I'm a 90s fanboy and that's just how things are. That's looking pretty good.
So I know at least the two out of three of you guys that are uh, watching might appreciate this. Uh, I recently found this website called, uh, uh, I think it's called comicbooksplus.com. I'm going off the top of my head. It's either comicsplus.com or comicbookplus.com. I don't know if you guys have heard of it before, but it's a database that has uh, all the public domain comics uh, that are out there. And so, like, I've, I've been looking up, like, really old Golden Age comics to enjoy in their ridiculousness. But they don't just have comics. They have, like, old radio dramas there, and they have, like, uh, like fanzines and all sorts of, uh, I guess, pop culture, you can say. Uh, um, that's all in the public domain now. It's, uh, it's pretty fun. <laughs> Especially if you feel like reading some comics and you just don't have five dollars to buy a single issue of Batman. You can go read some free public domain comics by Wally Wood or uh, any number of those old golden age great artists. It's looking pretty good. I get that filled in. It's not closing. Oh, I see. One of the problems with loosely inking is I have to make sure the whole thing is closed up before I paint bucket or else, there we go, else it's all going to leak to the rest of the piece. Looking good, looking good. At least I think it's looking good. What do you guys think?
Alright, looking good, good. So for those of you guys who are just joining us, I'm working on a commission right now. It's uh, an original character uh, by the name of Allison. It's not my original character. It's the original character of the commissioner, the client. Uh, so, so this isn't my design. I can't take credit for that, but I can take credit for the drawing because it, it is my drawing. Again, pretty close to finishing the the main inks here. Then what I'll probably do is go in with some cross hatching um, or some additional cross hatching. Kind of play with the, the line work a little bit, uh, you know, uh, thinning out lines where I think the line weight needs to be thinner or thickening it in other areas, and then. Uh, I might add some tones, and, and we might call it done. So, you know what? Actually, I'm gonna play with something right here real quick. Cause I'm always zooming in and out all the time. Might be nicer if you guys have, whoops, have a bigger view of the whole piece as I zoom in and out here. and you guys can see the whole piece. Actually, let me click over here. Let's see how that looks. Oops. Yeah. All right. You guys let me know how this looks. If you like this better or worse or, or what.
I think that's looking pretty good. Doing all right, doing all right. Almost have this whole thing inked in about 45 minutes. That's not bad. Whenever I do commissions at uh, conventions, it always takes me forever. It's mostly because I don't get to just sit quietly and draw like I am right now. Though I'm a little distracted by the stream. I don't have to talk a whole lot. Maybe that'll change one day when I have a hundred billion subscribers. That's right. More subscribers than there are people on the planet. going to be alien subscribers. Martians. But for right now, don't have a lot of followers, don't have a lot of people chatting up it up, so I can just sit, focus on my drawing. Amazing how fast you can get things done that way. start making some creative choices soon. Let's try to get my signature going here. Again, at this point, I'm just about done inking. So I gotta just make sure I'm not missing any major parts, any major lines. And then I have to go through and kind of play up where I want the line weight to be thicker, where I want it to be thinner. Um, if I want any drop shadows, like I've penciled some shadows in here. I'm not 
sure if I want to keep these. Let's throw those in right now. And I'll decide if I want to keep them in a sec. I think I got all the major lines. Oops. So I'm gonna turn off my sketch layer here and leave me just with uh, the lines. <laughs> oh, you really like the version of Cosmo Canyon? Yeah, that's a uh, that's a good song. There's um. Another one, I don't know if I can play it here on Twitch, um, but there's another version where the uh, London Symphony Orchestra did an arrangement of uh, Final Fantasy themes where they tell, through the song, they tell the entire story of uh, Final Fantasy VII through the arrangement of the themes. So you know exactly where, uh, you know, Cloud is on the train and when uh, the first Mako reactor is blowing up and, um, uh, and when we first meet Sephiroth. And then, of course, the worst part when you know exactly when Sephiroth flies down and kills Aerith. But it's all through music. There's no visuals. There's no dialogue it's just through the arrangement of themes it's uh it's it's incredible um i'll have to look up exactly what the what it's called uh but it is done by the london symphony orchestra and uh it's obviously theme final fantasy 7 theme i don't know exactly the title i'll have to google it for you guys later It's always tricky with streaming music. I always have to like go find the music, uh, the source of the music, and see what kind of rights they have um, available. If they allow it for streaming, if it's uh, in the public domain or Creative Commons. Uh, if it isn't Creative Commons, what license are they using with Creative Commons? It might be. Uh, no commercial use, they might be very restrictive. Oops. Um.
I'm going to add in a few hatchings, and then I think I'm going to throw in some just basic screen tones. Because I think this really looks nice, but I think it'll look nicer if there was just some really simple tones to kind of, uh, kind of distinguish um, the shirt from the skin, from the hair, etc, etc. Um, I'm most likely not going to go too crazy with it. I'm probably not going to put like a lot of um, a lot of values. Probably just simple tones to uh, just to distinguish the different forms a little bit better. But who knows? Sometimes I get carried away. I really like what I'm working on, and then I decide I'm just going to go all out on it. So who knows? I guess we'll find out once I start doing it. Welcome back. All right. Unless any of you guys see anything that I am missing or that looks off, I think I'm going to add in some screen tones here. So let's let's start with her shirt. Here. So if you guys don't know how uh, Clip Studio Paint works or Manga Studio, uh, what I'm doing is I'm just lassoing the area that I want to put in the screen tone. Um, traditionally speaking, what manga artists would do is lay uh, this acetone uh, sheet of paper that has a bunch of black dots on it over their artwork, and when they... Um, uh, 
they would lay on top of their artwork and they'd take an exacto knife and actually cut out uh, where they want the screen tone would be and use a, a, a burnishing tool to kind of adhere the, the acetone to the uh, to the artwork. That was very time consuming. It still is. Um, I don't know how many manga artists still do traditional tones versus digital. Uh, but I, I can't imagine why you would still do it traditionally when digital is an option. Because, man, that is so time consuming. It's time consuming to do this digitally. But as you can see in a sec, it's much, much easier. I just lassoed where I'm going to lay this out. I'm going to go into my tones here. Uh, let's see, I just want basic screen tones. I'm just going to drop in the tone. Uh, so I don't quite like that. Um, The dots are just too big. There we go. Much better. Just clean this up just a little bit. Thank you! I think this is looking pretty good myself. just a little bit darker. Looking good, looking good, looking good. I'm going. Okay. I have a plan for the hair here. So I don't want the hair to blend in with itself too much. So I think we might end up with two tones on here.
Can you imagine if I had to do this all traditionally? This is... I think I'd go nuts. So it looks like I've been streaming for about an hour. So now is a good time for me to be shameless. Just remind you guys that if you like what you've been watching, to uh, give me a follow here on Twitch. I'm about halfway through, um, or halfway to an affiliate after only streaming a couple weeks, so. That's that's exciting, um, and I'd love to reach that point. So, give me a follow if you can, or if you want to, or if you like what I'm doing here. And if you really like what I'm doing here, and you want to help me keep on making more art, there's always my Patreon, or you can send me a tip through Coffee, or just. PayPal me a donation to show your appreciation. That's uh, obviously don't feel like you gotta. Only do it if you can and if you feel comfortable doing that. But every dollar helps me make more art, so I appreciate it if you do or can. Thus concludes my shameless self-promoting. <laughs> Alright, so let's This isn't quite all done, but I kinda wanna make sure I have a tone going the way I want it to here. The great thing about working with uh, Clip Studio Paint here is once you lay in a tone layer, I don't have to keep lassoing and paint bucketing in the, uh, the tone. I can actually draw with it at this point. Which is really good when toning hair. So I can just draw strands of hair and it'll be in tone.
getting there, almost done. So let's add in just a few more tones here. More like highlights here, so a little shine in our lips. We'll get a little shine in our hair here. I think I'm just going to put in a couple shadows and then I think I'm going to call it done. What are you guys thinking? Should I just delete the whole file? So, I guess we can use this as a mini tutorial moment. So, when you're dealing with screen tones and you want to combine them, you have to be very careful or else you're going to get a really ugly look to your tones. Because uh, the dot patterns are going to fight each other and you obviously don't want that. So, so I, I picked the dot pattern here for the hair. 
So for the tone that I lay on top, I'm going to pick a line pattern. So, zoom out here a little. This last one area so I can get this down. So, when I'm on the hair layer here, I can see these different stats on the right hand side here. So I can see the number of the, the screen frequency, the um, the kind of layer, which is a circle, the density, and the angle. So you want to make sure just about all of that matches up. So I'm going to throw in another layer here, uh, but doing more uh, dots is going to look a little funny. So I'm going to pick a line here and then drop in the lines. Now there's a whole bunch of things I have to fix right here. So first thing, I have to match the frequency. So the, the dot pattern underneath is at 50 frequency, so I have to match the frequency of the lines. Now you see how weird that looks right now? It kind of hurts the eyes. So that's because the angle isn't right. So the angle here is at 90, but the angle of the other, uh, the dot pattern is at 45 degrees. So there we go. Now, it looks like it just disappeared. That's just because the density isn't high enough. So, uh, let's see, the density of, this is 50, so this has to be at least 60. I'm gonna make it 70. Yeah. Uh, that might be too dark. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna stick with 60, see how it goes from there. The more I do this, I might keep it at 50. So I don't want this to be too dark. So yeah, the, the great part with working in digital tones is I can basically draw with them. If you're kind of cutting pieces of uh, acetone and gluing them, you can't exactly draw lines with them. Well, that's not 100% true. You can. If you look a lot of like old EC comics, you'll see some some dr lines drawn with them, but it's not easy because the the lines aren't actually drawn. They're 
cut out and placed. So it's a little bit of a pain. Alright, almost there. Very close. Alright, so I'm gonna... Do, um, let's see. I think... Again, I'm trying to keep this simple. I don't, I don't want to make this too complicated. It's just there's supposed to be a black and white commission. But when it's a pretty good drawing, I like to do, do values and stuff. It helps bring out the piece, bring out the, the parts the illustration. So I think I'm gonna do gradient here. So I can do value without doing too much work. I have to make sure I do the same thing. So the shirt here is 50 and 45. This one, I don't really have to worry about matching tones. Because I'm not overlaying two different tones. But I do need to... Change this to a line. There we are. We'll just add maybe a shadow for like the, around the hairline and uh, any other kind of like cast shadows, and I think we'll call it done at that point. What are your guys' thoughts?
not chatting a whole lot because I'm obviously focusing here. Uh, but if you guys have any questions, don't hesitate to ask in the chat. I don't know why I'm doing something or how I'm doing something or what I'm doing in general. I don't know who I am. I want to know. thing I want to do so I like the look of this gradient that's right here on her stomach so I think I want to throw another gradient there but um, I think I want to put it on the skirt I should be naming my layers, I'm not doing a very good job at that. nice. Alright, I think... Oops. Some new cleaned up here. I think I'm willing to call this done. What do you guys think? I'm not quite done with this stream yet, so if I'm calling this done, I'm going to move on to my next commission. But, uh... I think... Just about done here. You guys see any glaring errors I need to address? Regardless, nothing you can see. Good. I'll take it. So, what I'll probably end up doing because I'm always, uh, whenever I'm doing streams, my brain isn't always, uh, I'm always a little scattered brain. See, I'm so scattered brain, I can't, couldn't even think of scattered brain. Uh, so, I'm probably, before I send this off to the client, I'm probably going to look this over. And probably do a, a little bit of a touch up here and there to to uh, make sure it's completely up to snuff before I send it off and make sure I look at it with fresh eyes uh, but I think 
for the most part, I'm calling this done. I hope the client likes it. So let's give this a big save. All right, one down. Let's move on to the second. I'm probably not gonna get the second one done um, today, uh, but if I can at least get a big chunk of the inks done, that would be great. So this character uh, goes by Snow Maiden. It's a superhero, uh, original superhero character. Uh, let me look at who created it. Uh, the creator is, goes by Lord Amon. And so that's, that's who this is. Again, just like with the other character, I didn't create, uh, I didn't create this character. I didn't um, have nothing to do with it. I was just commissioned to draw her, and that's where we're at. So, I think this. And for those of you guys who came late that didn't see the beginning of the last uh, character, uh, whenever I do commissions, I always, uh, at least uh, online commissions, I always sketch out the commission first do it in this blue line and then uh, I send it to them to make sure I didn't forget anything anything that's important to the character um, you know I, I didn't create these characters so I don't know them uh, I could be forgetting something very very important like hairstyle or maybe there's like a headband that they're wearing that's uh, really special and if I didn't uh, include it then the character just wouldn't be the character so I always send send the, the blue line sketch to the, the client to make sure that it meets their approval. Make sure I didn't forget anything important. Uh, and once they say, yeah, good to go, then I will start inking and coloring or inking and toning in the last example. Now this one will be fully colored. So maybe if I can get the inks done in the next half hour, you can see how I lay in flat colors. But definitely, unless I get a huge uh, group of people watching me, I'm, I'm probably going to stop at the, the inking and flat tones. I know some of you guys have been watching since the beginning, and I'm sure you guys have things to do. You don't want to don't want to spend six hours watching me draw. Unless you want to watch me for six hours. If you guys want to watch me for six hours, I'll, I'll draw for six hours. I have to take some breaks in there, but I'll do it. Hold on one second, I swap out my music. Answer is Thursday. 
not what you guys hear. You're probably onto some uh, chip tune music by now. Maybe it's looped all the way around to uh, playing Final Fantasy again. I don't know if you guys heard that. Someone was very loud going down the stairs outside. Sounded like someone was falling down the stairs. Looks like she's possessed at this point. <laughs> Okay, let's 
Let's get the eyes going here. Now, since this is going to be a color piece, I, I drew in the pupils, but I'm going to leave that for color. So all I'm going to do for the inking here is I'm just going to draw a circle here. It's going to be the iris. You guys might not see it. Uh, oops. No. But when um, when I throw in the color, I'll, I'll do the pupils in color. It uh, creates. Um, it, if you pick like a non-black color for pupils uh, when you're coloring, it makes the eyes a little bit softer, and it helps the pupil feel like it's more. Um, set into the eye rather than just like a dot on the eye. So for the inking stage, all I'm going to do is just do the circles there. Now I'm thinking in a future stream, not not this stream, uh, about just doing kind of maybe a really long, I say really long, but it's not gonna be, it's not gonna be like hours long, um, or it will be hours. I can't talk when I'm drawing it. Um, I was thinking about doing a longer stream than usual. My normal streams are usually about two hours ish thinking about doing a future stream that was maybe like three to four hours but I wouldn't be on camera I wouldn't be um, uh, um, I wouldn't have my microphone on I would just have some music playing for you guys and I was just going to do a marathon of drawing uh, that way I can focus on doing the the drawing, not have to worry about talking or um, responding to you guys verbally. Uh, I, I would still be in the chat and stuff, um, responding to questions there. But uh, sometimes when I'm on stream and I'm focused on talking or uh, just kind of being in like a performance mode, if you will, if you can call this a performance. Uh, I don't get to focus on the drawing exactly the way I might normally do it or I might go faster through some parts like I said with this piece I'm probably going to go back in after the stream and you know clean up a couple things maybe add a, a couple more smaller details uh, when I can like really just focus on it but I might do a longer stream in the future where I don't have to worry about talking or um, or responding uh, too fast to you guys and just uh, just do a really long drawing where I really focus about with all the details going um, so basically the whole point of that long incoherent ramble was uh, I think I'm going to do that in the future I don't know how soon in the future I don't know if it will be next week, two weeks from now uh, but let me know what you guys think about that idea in general. If you think it's a terrible idea, if you think it would be a fun idea. The other reason uh, I want to make it kind of a longer one is where I can just I can just work. And so if I, if it's several hours, I can get a bunch of work done. Um, people I imagine would be popping in and out throughout that stream. I don't honestly expect anyone to have that kind of time to be able to sit for hours and hours. Uh, but yeah, that's at least an idea. I, I've been trying to figure out this whole streaming thing, what people want to see, what people like. 
different ways I can do the same thing. I'm not exactly a master order over here. I don't even think I said order right. <laughs> so maybe people would be more inclined to watch if I wasn't talking. If I wasn't on camera. I want my ugly mug scaring people away. Another idea in a future stream, I want to have some guests come on and do some drawing with me. I don't know exactly how the logistics of that would work, but it's still something I want to do. I think it'd be fun to have other artists come on and draw with me and have some friends who aren't artists draw with me. I think it'll just be a fun experience for well, me above all, but then everyone watching. What could be more fun than drawing with friends? just might be able to do this. There's not a whole lot left to ink. And this might be a new record for me as a, uh, from my own personal streams. Uh, this might be my first stream where uh, I didn't have to quit halfway through and like restart the stream. I think every stream since I've started, some kind of problem happened and I had to quit and restart. Now that I said that, I probably jinxed it. It's probably gonna... Probably gonna quit on me like right now.
Oh dear, what's that in reference to there, Seth? people who can't draw. <laughs> well, everyone can draw. That's a fact. The question is, how well can you draw? Just from my own curiosity, can you guys hear that banging that's outside? I'm not sure uh, how sensitive my microphone is. Okay, good. It is very loud. And since I don't use any fancy equipment, uh, I don't really have control over the gain of the, uh, the microphone. bad. Alright, let's so... Oh, looks like I just missed... What else we gotta put in? Shading and then... Or, I'm sorry, not shading. Get some flat blacks. And then we can throw in some flat colors. And then we can call it a day. Or, if you guys want, I can just keep coloring. I'll... After I put in the flats, I'll, I'll ask what everyone wants.
almost there. Sign it. This is kind of silly, but I need to look up what a snowflake looks like. We're gonna do this on another layer so I can do a line hold later to make this a light color. And we're gonna do another trick that I love doing using these uh, symmetrical rulers and create six lines of symmetry here. So, create this snowflake. I can do it perfectly symmetrical. Someone's not right there, hold on. Let's go back. Let this be six sided. Okay. I don't know how we messed that up the first time, but here we are. Go. That's a pretty good looking snowflake. So when I put in the colors, I'm going to do a line hold and make that white-ish, whatever I need it to be for the um, uh, for the full color version here. I think I'm just going to add in a little bit of hatchings here, and then I'm going to throw in the flat colors. Now the flat colors, believe it or not, is not going to take very long.
I'm not sure how much grit I want to add to this character. I want to keep her... Smooth? Or add some, like, superhero action grit. You know what? We can always do it on a new layer and take it away if I hate it. it'll do for now. So let's throw in some flat colors and then I think we can call it a day for today. So <clears throat> to make this process a little bit faster I'm gonna take my line art layer here and I'm going to uh, make it a reference layer I'm going to go in my paint bucket, click on the close and fill tool, and that should allow this. That should let me um, do this pretty fairly quickly. So let's get a. This character is a little bit on the paler side. So her. Oops. <laughs> Helps if I'm on the right layer. So the problem with myself uh, inking so loosely, <laughs> this tool doesn't like to follow what I meant the lines to do. It's just a machine, and it follows what it thinks it should be doing. Still a good start. So we're gonna switch over to the lasso fill tool. What you do is just lasso where you want a color to be, and just fill it straight in.
I'm gonna show you real quick here how uh, what I was talking about with the eyes. I'm, I'm not gonna fully render the eyes right now, but I'll show you what I mean with the uh, the color. the iris in there and now we're going to pick a deeper blue Obviously, this is a, or hopefully, obviously, this is just a starting point. This isn't the fully rendered eye. In fact, that's too shiny. 